So what, what's changed in the last couple of years, when I started at Google, we would, for Translate, we would go to the EU and we'd take like the best French translator and German translator and we'd look at their texts and we'd statistically model the language. With AI, we've started to learn languages like a child learns language. And this is the big change that uh, Alex kind of referred to and that's what's behind these languages we're launching today. So that means we're sort of able to take the audio input and make sense of it and turn it into text for all of these different languages. That takes a bunch of training and compute and data, so it does, it's still a careful process, but it's a more intuitive way of learning languages and it's going to be a way that we're going to, I hope, be able to bring more, uh, more languages together. So it's uh, breakthrough technology, our team uh, here in um, Nairobi and also in, uh, uh, in Ghana have been involved in uh, exactly that effort and working with locals. And then on sign language, I think um, I have nothing to announce yet, but what I would say is uh, the power of AI to help people uh, with different kinds of uh, disabilities is enormous. So we have a project called Project Relate, and Project Relate is like live captions on your phone. So uh, you may have tried that already. If you have an Android phone, there's an on-device large language model, a nanoscale model, which can help to give you live captions. So that's cool for translation, but actually there are something like between two and 300 million people worldwide who have severe speech impediments. Mm -hmm. So they can only really be understood by close family because you know, for, for various reasons, it's hard to understand their speech patterns. But they can train this device, like, sorry, train this app on the device to understand them. And suddenly they can be understood by mm -hmm. everybody. So I think that's an example. So sign language, I think, yes, absolutely. Video capture, we've got some experiments in this area, nothing to announce today, but I'm really uh, excited by the potential of this technology to genuinely deliver on the promise of making uh, the internet work for everyone. Think about for a moment what it's like if you can suddenly see the entire internet in your language and access all of that stuff where previously it felt like you couldn't understand it. It's a huge opportunity. Alex Okosi, MD of Google Sub-Saharan Africa. You've just announced another 12 African languages in Google Translate. What did it take to bring those languages into the model? Look, it took like extensive work. We're really excited about it um, because it really does speak to our ability to now leverage AI um, and multilingual models to be able to bring on more languages um, that we can support as Google in a much faster way into Translate. What does this mean? It really means that you know, Africans that speak these languages, we you know we think it can impact up, up to 300 million people, can now be able to interact with the web, um, you know, search the web, go into the web, build business on the web, much more naturally in the languages that they're used to, um, which of course will have a, a, a tremendous positive impact in terms of what they do and how they live on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what it means. It's really a great opportunity for that for that to happen. So it took a lot of effort. Um, it does take a lot of effort, but AI enables us to solve for that much faster. Um, the reality is that, of course, over time, we want to bring more and more on board. But what's critical to us is that you've know, you got to get it right. Um, so it does take time and effort, and it does require us to, to test through our technology to make sure that the languages that we are bringing on board are, are robust, as robust as they can be. While we, of course, you know, always know that they will continue to get better and better over time as they interact with people using them and asking them for, for more translations. You've got 25 African languages on the platform now, but 11 of South Africa's 12 official languages are there. How does South Africa get that lucky? Well, look, I think that, you know, I, I can't say South Africa got lucky, but I think a lot of what we do is, of course, being able to train the, the, the model in terms of the languages and being able to translate languages that we have a lot of data to be able to now be able to see a speech to text with the translation. So I think South Africa has benefited from that. Um, I think that's that's part of where we are. But of course, as we move forward, there's going to be more languages from other parts of the continent that will also be added. So very excited as an African that we took for us to be announcing this and very excited as Google that we continue to make these innovations that are going to make technology much more robust and helpful for Africans. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Matt Britton, president of Google for Europe, Middle East and Africa. What brings you to Nairobi, firstly? Well, we're launching today two things. One, 15 new languages uh, that you can speak to Google with. And uh, that means about 300 million more people in Africa will have the chance to enjoy that kind of opportunity and to understand the web better than ever. Secondly, a big announcement around digital skills. 
You know, if we want Africa to really benefit from the AI revolution, then Africans need to be able to build uh, technology tools and businesses on it. And so uh, $5.8 million grant, which is uh, to work with Nelson Mandela University and others to help people with AI and cybersecurity skills. And then, the, of course, it's always great to come and see what's happening on the ground because it's such an entrepreneurial environment. What is the opportunity in Africa with regard to AI? So, um, I mean, estimates suggest there could be billions of economic value from harnessing AI in terms of productivity and entire new industries opening up. That's one aspect of it, prosperity. Another, I think, is educational opportunity. You know, today, somebody with a lower educational background can use Gemini or ChatGPT or uh, large language models to write in a way that's close as, as, as close to my standard, maybe not quite as good as you, um, but they can write really well. Uh, they can understand the world in their language that they understand, perhaps in the language of a 12 year old in their own dialect, which was never possible before. So there's a big educational opportunity. And then we're working uh, with partners like Jacaranda Health, who are about to go and visit uh, on things like ma maternal health, uh, using AI and ultrasound and AI and communication channels to help mothers to um, have better health outcomes. So I think in health, in education and in the economy, there are big opportunities to come for Africa. Fantastic. And from a language point of view, what are the future plans for Google Translate? Well, uh, in the last few years, we've built um, an AI research center in Ghana and we've built a product engineering center here in Nairobi. And we are partnering uh, with local organizations to bring more languages online over time. Big breakthrough in the last few years is that AI can understand languages and learn them like a child does which is um, a faster way to learn, but we still need to partner with local organizations to get the models trained. So nothing more to announce today, but 15 new languages is quite a lot. Of the 94 languages globally where you can speak to Google today, uh, 25 are now African languages. So that shows our commitment. Fantastic. Um, I hope you don't mind me mentioning uh, Jeffrey Hinton, mm -hmm. uh, one of your alumni who just won the Nobel uh, yeah. Prize. He commented that AI currently is at the level of about a three-year-old, which is still pretty impressive. How long before it becomes a teenager and then an adult from a language point of view? Yeah, look, I mean, I think AI is a very broad-based technology. And so there are some manifestations, as you say, like chatbots, which you know, might say is kind of childlike today, sort of playful, a bit creative, not always accurate. But there are different applications of AI, um, not just generative AI, but also predictive AI. Um, technologies like AlphaFold 3, which also won a Nobel Prize uh, recently as well, which is about uh, helping scientific research with proteins in terms of diseases and um, uh, vaccines and so on. So huge breakthroughs in lots of areas. It's, you know, some of the challenge with AI is to, people say, well, when will it be more intelligent than X or Y or Z? If you think about, you know, if somebody had transported to today from the 1960s, they would see the fact that you can record an in interview with me on a tiny device that's connected to the cloud. They wouldn't be, be able to comprehend that. So we already have incredible sort of intelligence and there's more to come. What I would say is that it's up to us to harness the technology. AI on its, on its own isn't going to sort of suddenly do unexpected things. It's how we work with it that's going to shape the future. And that's why it's really important that Africans participate actively here. That's why we're uh, making this grant today to support digital skills in AI in Africa. Just uh, sticking to the Nobel Prize for, uh, for a moment, the fact that uh, current uh, Google people have won the Nobel Prize um, and a former Google employee has won the Nobel Prize for work done partly uh, at Google. What does that mean for Google firstly, but also um, what does it mean people working in commercial enterprises uh, winning the Nobel uh, Prize in scientific areas. What does that mean for AI in general? Well, I mean, it's, it's obviously humbling to see colleagues win these kind of uh, recognitions uh, for leading edge research. I think, um, you know, we won, uh, our colleagues won the Nobel Prize uh, in chemistry using computer science. And I think that's what's really interesting. You know, AlphaFold basically catalogued the 3D structures of 214 million proteins. And I went to see some um, life sciences researchers at a university this summer, and they told me that last week we did some research that took one day, and it would previously have taken five years before AlphaFold. So I think you can see why you're getting that recognition. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that it would come quickly, but they were saying to me, you know, your guys should win a Nobel Prize for this. 
But that's just the beginning of the breakthroughs. You think about that's just proteins, but what about DNA? What about material science? Think about what we might be able to unlock using these kinds of techniques in exploring so much that we don't understand the world around us and ways in which that can be harnessed by humanity for good, for better health outcomes, sustainability, low cost, clean energy. You know, there's a lot, uh, I think, still to come uh, with research like that. So coming back to uh, languages and translation, uh, you just added so many more new languages that wouldn't have been feasible to do so quickly without AI. So AI is accelerating your ability to bring new languages on board. So how long then will it take? Um, bearing in mind that Google Translate has been around since 2008, so yeah. 16 years, how many years will it take for the rest of the African languages to be brought onto the platform? I can't make a prediction, but I can say there's a journey here. So when we started with Translate, it was the UN and the EU in about 2006, I think. We would take text that the best human translators had um, translated and then we would statistically model the probabilities of different words matching. Uh, where we are with AI is we're learning languages in, in a totally different way, much more like a child would learn the language. So that is accelerating progress, but it also still takes us to you know, get data sets and train it and test it with local people. So it still takes a bunch of partnerships. So I don't want to predict, but it's definitely the case that this is getting better and faster. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.